Welcome back to another stream. We are here, we are talking about Hamas. We are talking about Raza. How the, how the, the all the Gazans and Arabs like to say Raza. And the ones who LARP for Palestine, for free Palestine, like to say Raza. Raza. It's actually become kind of a funny meme in the, I would say in like the pro-Israel community is like, <laughs> uninvolved white people just going Raza. Raza, trying to say it in an Arabic accent. It's Aza, folks. If I remember correctly, the original word is not even in Arabic. It's the original word for Aza is in, not it's not in Hebrew. I think it was in Phoenician, and it's Aza. It's not Raza, but there's a language or there's a letter in the Arabic language that's like a G R. I forgot when I was learning Arabic. I'm not really doing it so often anymore. It makes like a G R sound like. Raza. I was never able to pronounce it, but that's the sound that they use to pronounce uh, Gaza. Hey, Raji boy is up in the chat. Raj, we haven't seen you in a minute, baby. How you doing, Raj? How you doing, baby? What's up, folks? I missed you all. What a week it has been. What a week it has been. Tomorrow is Shabbat. Who is excited for Shabbat? It's Shabbat this week. We gained a bunch of new subscribers on the channel this week. We met 100 new people. Join the fam this week. Very exciting. We had one video actually finally take off. YouTube blessed us with some delicious viewership, which was nice. Did it equal any money? Zip. I don't know what's going on with my ad rates on YouTube. It's very disappointing. Um, but uh, I got a bomb video coming out this week or next week. Sorry for the slowness in video uploads, but I got a video for you all about the red heifer coming up real soon. You guys, it's going to blow your mind. Gonna blow your mind. None of you guys seen me make content like this before. It is going to absolutely bodaciously blow your mind. All right, let's um let's start off here. Who's watching from where, baby? Let me know where you're watching from. I want to say a big thank you to our moderator Shayna in the chat. I uh, I saw you and your uh, your um, predicament with Barack, with wanting to be in his live streams. First of all, Shayna, I appreciate your dedication to our live streams and not going to the enemy side. Other Barack is an enemy of the Clat Nation, and we must attack him. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Other Barack is a great friend, and I um, I highly recommend you guys check out his live stream. He's live streaming, I think, around the same time as me. But I appreciate Shayna being dedicated and staying here. Obviously, Shayna, you're not being paid or anything, so you're welcome to open up both of our live streams or only his live stream, whatever it is. I appreciate having you here as our moderator, but you're not bound by any contract. So I just want to let you know you have freedom of choice. To be with whoever YouTuber you would like to be with. For whatever live stream you would like to be with. This is a free nation, ladies and gentlemen. Free nation. Um, I also want to say here right at the opening to everybody who is watching us. Please, please, please. If you can and you want to join our beautiful and growing Discord community. The official Traveling Clat Discord. The link can be found in the pinned comments of this live stream if you're watching in post. And if you're watching live right now. You can just join by clicking the link that I'm about to pin to the chat. Please join the Discord right now because at the end of this chat, towards the end of the live stream, we'll be taking some calls as we always do to speak to some of you beautiful people to get your opinions on what's going on. Um, I, I noticed that in the last live stream, actually you got the most views out of any live stream I've ever done. It's at like 7,000 views right now. I don't know what happened with it. I guess the title was very, um, title and thumbnail were very good. Some people got pissed off at me for the title and thumbnail being very clickbait. So I thought I would do a similar concept this time, more clickbait, but maybe try to stay on topic because I noticed maybe the last live stream, I didn't stay on topic enough for people to feel content with. So uh, that's a fair criticism. Uh, I sometimes go on tangents and then I like to engage with you guys. So I lose my point a bit, um, but I'll give you guys an update as we always do. Um, uh, what's it called? HD says, I will match the first Super Chat up to $50. Let's go. God damn, HD, I love you. So cute. That's so nice of you. Um, Raj wishes he, wishes he has cheese right now. I'm about to say hello. Please let me know where you guys are watching from. The 60 people are watching us four minutes into the stream. Let me know where you're watching from. What time is it for you right now? Um, but yes, huge thanks to Shayna. Huge, massive thank you to all the supporters and members of this channel who are watching to shout out a few. We got Chief Smoke a lot. We got BT. We got Flunko in the house. We got June Trennel home in the house. Shayna's obviously in the house. We got 
YB is not a member anymore, but was a member and super chatted a lot. So I remember you, a real one. I don't know why you're not a member anymore. Someone got to member you up. Mars Mello is in the house. Jack Kimmel, thanks for being in the house. Alex is here. Raj, our member, is up in here. Sarah MG is up in here. Uh, Betsy, beautiful Betsy is in here. D. Bordeaux is in the house. St. Mark is in the house. Uh, HD is in the house. It's YT is in the house. Gail Moody is in the house. Everyone's here. Corn Julio Poli Polio is in the house. Uh, so, guys, get again, Kirst Christie's in the house. Join our Discord community because you guys also, I've been sneaking away a few uh, giveaways here and there to the Discord peeps. Every once in a while when I'm on the road, I like slide a little cool picture in there that you guys can't see anywhere else. I promise it's nothing perverted. It's not like a nude or anything. It's just content production stuff. But the people on Discord, I'm having conversations with them and stuff, so it's cool. It'd be nice to build that community in case something happens to this YouTube channel. YouTube actually deleted two of my YouTube channels this week. Um, there are other channels that are unrelated. I'm trying to recover them, but you know, anything could happen. It's possible for me to lose. I hope it wouldn't happen, but I, I promise it can happen. YouTube can delete my platform at some point. And I, you know, considering the content that I make, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Um, let's see where you guys are watching from. We got Sarah's watching from NYC. Mars Mel's watching from Manchester with a crying face emoji. I don't know why you're sad about that. Manchester, I heard is a nice place. Alex is watching from Bucharest. CJ is watching from the Philippines. Mabuhai. St. Mark's watching from Chicago. Mamie's watching from Mississippi. Seed of Iblis is watching from New York. Alina's watching from the UK. Um, Dee's watching from Rhode Island. June's watching from Nova Scotia, Canada. Maria's watching from Florida. Denise is watching from Hawaii. Aloha, Denise. That's really cool. Um, CJ, yes, yeah, CJ said tensions are high. They are definitely high right now. They are higher than they've ever been. Um, they are higher than they've ever been. Uh, okay. Should we should we just get into it? 73 people in the live chat. Should we just start talking about what's going on? Uh, let's talk about the news. Uh, maybe we'll run a poll. You guys are always interested. What would you guys like to know about? Um, let's do, would you guys, updates, updates. On the war, or a summary of Ramadan. War, war updates. Let me know what you guys, run this poll real quick for me, folks. Let me know what you guys are interested in talking about. And I really, really, really would love for you guys to join. We got a poll, Mars Mello. We got a poll. We got a poll, baby. I'm still a little bit sick. A little bit. <coughs> um, 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 what was I saying? My cough like took it out of me. Uh, please, everybody vote in this poll. I want to hear your thoughts. And please, please, please join the Discord so we can have some conversations towards the end of this live stream. It'd be nice to call you guys in. Okay, war updates. We'll talk about Ramadan after. Um, let's talk about the war updates. So since the last live stream, it's been quieter, but not quiet. There have been a lot of threats coming out of Lebanon, Syria, Iran, and uh, the CIA has warned. Hey, Aaron dropped this 279 Canadian. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate you a lot, man. Um, the CIA in the U.S. has, uh, has, um, predicted that Iran is going to attack imminently um, on US or on Israel soil. Um, we're not a hundred percent sure what is going on what's going to happen but uh, but everybody's tense the, the threats are continuing going on this has been going on since last weekend. I mean last weekend during Shabbat during Friday Saturday everybody was expecting us to um, basically get att attacked by Iran but it didn't happen. So um, it seems that the CIA and the U.S. Foreign uh, Foreign Relations Office they put out a moda yesterday. Uh, uh, what is it in English? Uh, an alert, basically, for Israel and for American citizens in Israel to uh, steer clear of the country. Also, Russia. Um, HD, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much for matching the up the super chats. I appreciate that a lot, uh, or for committing to match the the super chats. Um, 
the um, essentially Iran has been throwing out these threats and uh, Russia, the uh, foreign relations office in Russia also warned their citizens to not travel to um, the Middle East at the moment to steer clear of countries like Lebanon, Syria, Israel. Um, so as to not be stuck in a in a position of danger. So it seems like 100 percent there seems to be something on the table right now. There will be probably a strike from all the rumors that I'm hearing. It seems like Iran is targeting actually the nuclear um, the, the the secret nuclear facility in the south of Israel in um, the Negev. Um, it seems like that's the the situation right now. Raj is saying bombing a consulate is illegal. It's also illegal to run a terrorist operation within your consulate, which they were doing. So, um, yeah, I think that's fair game. Um, Victoria Lynn, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate that you're here. Um, so, yeah, basically, that's the update with the Iranian threats. As for what happened in Gaza yesterday, very interesting update. The IDF uh, successfully executed, I believe it was three sons and three grandchildren of Ismail Haniya, which is the amazingly beautiful, uh, very handsome uh, motherfucker from Hamas who is hiding his little bitch ass in a five-star hotel in Qatar while the rest of his nation suffers um, and becomes a billionaire from stealing foreign aid. So that's the um, that's the wonderful Ismail Haniya. So he was uh, treated to a wonderful surprise yesterday, where the IDF executed some people in his family. You know, I've got as a human being, I've got mixed opinions and feelings on it. It's hard to say that you're okay with the fact that these people were probably non-combatants, and they probably, I don't know to say it's like how do you make the decision who deserves death and who doesn't especially when it's a targeted attack like that but it's hard not to feel a feeling of joy i don't know how to explain it without sounding bad there's no way to say it without sounding bad you know it's like it's it sucks that kids have to die it sucks that it sucks that his children were related to him Ellie just gifted five memberships. Thanks so much, Ellie. Damn, you just a bunch of cool people just became members. That's amazing. I'm happy for you guys. Thank you, Ellie. Appreciate you a lot. Um, but yes, the the thing that was more shocking to me is that the video. I'll try to pull it up real quick to show you guys because I shared it on my Instagram yesterday. Um, there was a video shared of his reaction to the deaths of his children. And his grandchildren. What's up, being becoming? Welcome to the chat. It's actually pretty fucking disgusting. This is him being told the news. He just. Just sort of says something and then kind of walks off. Almost kind of looks like he's smiling a bit. Like it, it's like he's completely disassociated from what's going on. Now look, as a father, I can't imagine that getting the news that your children have just been killed. But it's, first of all, I'm sure he has many children to go around because I'm sure he's not like a dedicated father or something. And for him, I'm sure his children, um, I'm sure his children is, they're not important to him in the slightest because if they were, they probably wouldn't be in the Gaza Strip. And he probably wouldn't, if his children were actually important to him and he didn't see them more than other, if he didn't see his children as, as anything other than Shahids to Islam, then he probably wouldn't have been okay with what's going on. He probably wouldn't have kept on pushing. He probably would have made an effort to end this war. He probably would have used the billions of dollars he has to get them out of there. But um, no, nah, this doesn't have anything to do with cultures. You know, you see Palestinian people, Roger saying it has to do with cultures. You see Palestinian people asphyxiating over the deaths of people in the Gaza Strip. You see um, Palestinian people yelling and screaming at the deaths of people all around them all day. That is your reaction of an evil psychopath monkey person. That's not even a human being. That's a demon. That's actually an evil demon human being. But that's, that's what you expect from a type of person who steals billions of dollars in foreign aid to his own people to live in Qatar. 
uh, that's, you know, that's, that's the kind of person. That's how you react when you're that kind of person. That's a disgusting bottom of the barrel type of human being. That's absolutely horrific. And, but I expect nothing less. There's nothing manly about that either, huh? To be a man, there's nothing manly about that. There's nothing prideful about that. There's nothing beautiful about that. There's nothing honorable about that. That's disgusting. To know that he's going to sleep tonight in a five-star hotel in Qatar. He's going to eat a nice big dinner, a lavish one. Probably going to have sex with a prostitute. He's probably going to do some disgusting and moral things. Um, maybe even drugs, you know, and I'm not saying that all drugs are bad or anything, but he's probably going to do stuff like that. And probably, he's probably going to do anything other than think about the, his kids that were murdered because of him and his actions and his life decisions. Uh, and, you know, as his family keeps being targeted, I think to add more pressure onto what's going on with him, you see the lack of reaction shows that he sort of disassociates, not just disassociates from the Palestinian people, disassociates from his own fucking family. That is disgusting. That is actually disgusting. But this is, this is what I expect from the leaders of Hamas. So actually what we see with the reaction of Ismail Haniyeh is exactly what I would expect from the leaders of a rapist, rapist, murderous, homophobic, uh, ethnic cleansing regime like Hamas. You know, every horrible title you can give to Hamas, I, w I expect nothing less. When I saw that video, and I'm curious... I'm curious, how many of you guys saw that video yesterday before I showed it to you now? How many of you saw the video of Ismail's reaction to his oft ch family? Let's do that. I did. I did. We're doing another poll, folks. We're doing another poll. Curious to know um, how many of you guys actually saw it before I showed it to you now. Uh, when I saw it, the emotions, and please, when you're listening to this right now, you're voting on the poll, please comment to me in the chat. What, what did you feel when you saw that video, if you saw the video? And if I showed it to you now and you felt something, what did you guys see? What did you guys feel in your heart? What I felt was an immense feeling of sadness for the Palestinian people. Because I was like, if this is how this fuckface reacts to his own family... His own family, his children. I mean, as a father, I don't expect that he raised the kids like the whole time. But like, you know, I, I mean, I, I just can't, ex if that's how he, how he reacted to his own children, that's the immediate blunt reaction. I can't imagine that when the Palestinian people die and become shahids, I can't expect him to do anything less, anything more than laughing. I assume he probably gets joy out of it. He's like a fucking evil movie villain. It's not even, that's not a human reaction. It's a visceral, disgusting, subhuman way to, to carry yourself. This guy is, I, mean, I don't believe in the concept of the devil, but like this is the closest thing you can find to pure evil is what Ismail Haniyeh exhibited yesterday. And again, nothing surprising from the people of Hamas. But um, Let's see, this, this is what Palestinian extremism looks like. This is the, the evil face of Palestinian extremism. And you see it embodied in Ismail Haniyeh. And it, I mean, it's, again, it's rife through society there. Uh, ASA dropped us 19.99 Great British Pounds. We're up to $27 in Super Chats tonight. Thank you so much, ASA. Asa, I appreciate you a lot. Um, wrote, IDF couldn't get the daddy because he was too busy hiding behind women and children. Mossad will pick them off one by one. You can only hope. You can only hope. I, I agree and I really hope that Mossad... I hope that I hope that the consequences to their actions are felt through the generations of their family. I really, 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 really do. I hope that they're I hope they're afraid. And unless they do anything besides come fully against what they're like, I I would the only thing I would be content with is that they fully dis, disassociated with their family. They came out pro Israel. It's disgusting. Um, Le dropped us twenty dollars as well. Thank you so much, Le says, exactly, if Hania's reaction to the death of his sons, can you imagine how he feels about the death of Palestinian civilians? I cannot imagine that he does anything less than laugh. I truly can't imagine he does anything less than be like a super villain laugh. He just sits there going, <laughs> like literally laughing at the death of his own people. Because I don't know, it's like, I, I've never been in that position, but I know when I saw my people in Israel getting attacked and I was overseas and I felt horrible about it, I felt this immense amount of feeling of having to do something and supporting and you know, and I did whatever I could in my ways, but you see a person like that 
react to his own children in that way? And you see him sitting there like a fucking asshole. Like, just standing there with a fucking weird smirk on his face. In a, it looked like a hotel room or a hospital room. Right? I couldn't really tell exactly. I can only hope it's a hospital room for some sort of illness. But, the, like, you know, you just see that reaction. Like, what is a... How do you get to this point? There's no amount, there's no amount of oppression that can be exhibited upon you or your family or culture that can bring you to this point. This is pure evil. Pure evil. And it's, like, truly in its purest form. We got another wonderful super chat from YB. So we're up to $52 in super chats, only 20 minutes in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, do you think it's coincidental the sister arrested last week and sons and grandsons are en route to paradise this week? I hate him, no mercy, no pity. I'd like to think, I really like to think that the IDF is basing these actions on um, on his refusal and, and their refusal, Hamas's refusal to a ceasefire. <clears throat> it's so funny to break it in basic terms. Hamas commits a horrific act of violence upon the Israeli people. They request, Israel immediately starts retaliating against Hamas. People say injustice, injustice, injustice. Bombing from above is not the right way to act this war or to do this war. Enter, do a ground invasion. IDF does a ground invasion. Everybody says ceasefire, 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 ceasefire. You're not allowed to fight on the ground. Ceasefire. You're doing too much of a good job. Ceasefire. 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 Try to do a ceasefire. Do you get a ceasefire? Hostage is back. Okay. Uh, uh, Hamas breaks the ceasefire. So we're back to fighting again. Ceasefire. 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 Ceasefire agreement. They cancel it. 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 Every time a ceasefire agreement is brought to them on the table, they fucking cancel it. Every single time. How, how inbred and stupid can these people be? You cannot also request a ceasefire and be given the conditions to a ceasefire by an army that is kicking your ass and also say, nah, not my ceasefire. Your people are suffering. Your people are starving. Your people are dying in mass. Take the fucking ceasefire. But what came out was the truth this week, that the agreements to the ceasefire could not be met. Hamas could not supply 40 live hostages. That means out of the 130 hostages that we have all been waiting for for six months, we now know that there are less than 40 alive because they could not give us 40 alive. They couldn't reach 40 alive. For everybody that cried the Hamas is a just and amazing and beautiful caretaker of hostages. And the hostages were happy to be there. With all the cases of rape and sexual assault that were coming out, how do you feel now defending Hamas? How do you feel now? That's my question to those people. Because there's some people like that in this uh, live stream right now. And my God, you guys are super chatting so much today. I'm not even getting around to answer the regular comments. Just the super chats. HD just mashed $50. We're at $102 in super chats tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, HD wrote, he probably was thinking about how he could use their deaths to further the cause. Sorry, could you clarify HD? You mean whose deaths? You mean his son's deaths? Or the Palestinian people's deaths? Um... But this is the thing is that, look, even with all the information that I'm presenting right now in this live stream, there are still people, his sons. Okay, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, the thing is, I don't even know how much he is considered like a, a good character within Gazan society. I can't imagine. I think that the ideology of Hamas, the Hamas fighters, um, the, oh, I, I forgot the term, the, ak, ak, the ak, Aksa, the Aksa, the Aska. I forgot, there's a term for the Hamas fighters. Maybe somebody can write it for me in the chat. It's the actual, the like military part of Hamas. Not the Al Qassam brigades. Oh, maybe it was the Qassam. The Aksam? I forget. I forget what the term is. But maybe, I think the Palestinian people see the fighters, the actual militants of Hamas, maybe more as the, the Nakba. Right, right, right. The Nakba. That's what it is. The bitch brigade. I like that. <laughs> they are the bitch brigade. Brigade. Not Kassam. I think it is the Nakba. The, the Nekba. I think it's Nekba. Or Nakbe. Something like that. It's something like Nekba or Nakbe. Um, I think that the Gazan people and the Palestinian people as a whole probably see them as like the, the beautiful idols. They're the ones who do the good work and 
the 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 that's what it is the nukhba there you go we got it thank you guys um but uh <clears throat> but um but i think i don't think that they see his sons as uh i don't know I think maybe they should see him as shahids to islam it was funny to me that i saw an article by or a, a newscast immediately by um by uh, al jazeera which is funded obviously by the qatari regime and probably getting money from iran as well in some capacity to keep on its biased fucked up reporting about the middle east and world politics um I saw an article, or a, a, a katava, not a katava, a newscast. By the way, guys, join our Discord. Uh, if you guys want to jump in the chat, we got 150 people here right now. If you would like to jump in and speak to us a little bit later in the live stream, please, please, please join our Discord right now so you can call in. Um, but I immediately listened to the newscast of the Al Jazeera report on the death of his children. And uh, it was so funny the way that they reported it. It was actually hilarious. It was like... They, the, whoever was the reporter on the ground was immediately like, um, was immediately like, uh, they're killing innocent people, they're killing innocent children, they're targeting innocents. They didn't mention a single thing about him stealing money away, being part of a corrupt organization, being part of a militant organization. It was just like innocent kids, like full on protecting, full on protecting the lives of these people. Um, and I was like, I just feel bad for the people who get duped into believing this stuff. They watch this stuff and they're like, this is the truth. Because there are, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who take Al Jazeera as, um, as a real deal. They really do. Um, and it's sad. It's sad. It really is. Um, anyways, I feel like I went on a rant a bit, 26 minutes talking about this stuff. I want to point it over to you guys. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Engage with some of your comments here. And then we'll do some calls at the end. Please join the Discord. So you can join the Discord and we can take some calls a little bit later in the stream. I would love to hear from you guys and some of your thoughts on what I'm talking about. Um, you missed the rant, but you're here for the conversation, folks. So Ajin88 says, back to Poland and Russia, Israeli. That's nice and not racist. Um, William Gibson wrote, while hostages are clearly not being kept safe, it's a bit reductive to claim Hamas is just murdering them. Surely at least some hostages were killed by targeted airstrikes. Does that, but does that not, cons is that not still considered Hamas murdering them? Or, or do you fully, like, this is what I don't understand. Even the, I was having a conversation with a few Palestinians before I went live with this today. Even the people who say that Israel killed its own people on October 7th, in the chaos of all this, it's still the fault of Hamas. It doesn't make it the fault of the IDF. The IDF doesn't have some sort of morality issue with killing its own citizens by accident or even on purpose in certain situations where it literally has to. There's no sort of morality issue for the IDF all of a sudden. It's still the fault of Hamas. If a hostage got killed while being held hostage in Gaza by an Israeli airstrike, that's still the fault of Hamas. The three hostages that were killed by Israeli forces when they were coming out surrendering by flag. That horrible scenario that happened that whoever, whichever soldier killed them, I, could, I cannot imagine the pain that that person is going through. I cannot imagine the pain that that person went through. The, the, the soldiers who killed those soldiers are not at fault, those hostages are not at fault. It's still the fault of Hamas. It is still the fault of Hamas for bringing them into the Gaza Strip for holding them hostage against their will, innocent civilians, mind you, for releasing them in the middle of a battle zone with a white flag just so they would get shot on purpose, setting that whole thing up. Who did that? Think about that a little bit. Who actually set them out to run out naked with a white flag? <clears throat> it's still the fault of Hamas. It's, it's, not, it's not all of a sudden a morality issue for the IDF having some sort of moral issue with shooting random civilians or killing random people. It's still the fault of Hamas that this whole situation is there. It's the fault of Hamas that the Gaza Strip looks the way that it does. It's the fault of Hamas and the people who support them. I'm not making any excuses for it. Johnny Dang, 
I'm telling you the truth. The thing is, whether you want to listen to the truth or not is your problem. But I'm telling you the truth. D. Bordeaux says, I doubt Hamas even knows where some of the hostages were slash are. We saw the innocent civilians of Gaza crossing the borders on 10-7. It's true. It really is true. People like to say that it's just... It, it was just Hamas militants that broke in on October 7th. That's not true. A lot of Palestinian civilians broke in. A lot of them. Hinda said, Tal, how do you see this war ending? How do I see this war ending? By the way, thank you for 150 people who are watching here and over $100 in Super Chats tonight. 30 minutes in. You guys are amazing. Please also join the Discord so we can call you later in the chat. I would love for you guys to join so we can give you some calls and have you guys join the chat and, and contribute to the conversation. How do I see this war ending? How do I see this war ending? I really don't know. I got to be honest with you. I really don't know. The one thing I can tell you, I know some factors. For one, I know Hamas isn't going anywhere. Th that's obviously the case. Like, there's no way. Hamas cannot be getting rid of. It's an ideology at this point, And it's, it's very much alive in the West Bank, regardless of in the Gaza Strip. So regardless of if it's ever completely taken away in the Gaza Strip, it's still always going to be in the West Bank. So I don't see Hamas being destroyed or dismantled at all. I don't think it's possible. As for the northern front, the northern front, I, I, people don't believe it, but I still think there's a diplomacy situation that can be brought to terms. Just because I don't think, I just don't think the people of Lebanon are rallied behind Hezbollah enough. It really doesn't seem like it, and I think that's also partly the reason why they've never done anything more drastic than firing the rockets that they are. But something has to happen up there, right? Because the, the 100,000 people that are refugees right now from the northern Israel, they can't, th that situation can't go on. But I, I still truly believe that there's some sort of diplomatic solution that can be come to terms. I know it sounds a little far-fetched, but I really do believe it, that can be come to terms in the north. I don't know what exactly, I don't know how it can happen, but I believe it. As for the south, the Houthis, the Iraqi militia, Syrian militias, they're not in the south really, but at least for the Iraqi or the Houthis, I, I think they'll just fuck off at some point. <laughs> I don't think it's important enough for them. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of a toss up. It's kind of it's kind of anybody's game right now. It really depends on what happens next. We know that we've kind of lost the support of the U.S. Joe Biden is not. He really doesn't want this to con continue going on. Um, because he's, he's trying to win re-election, and obviously he's not going to get his votes. I don't really think he can really get his votes anymore, period. So he might as well just do right by the Jews at this point. Just support Israel, but because I think he's going down with it. So at least let us love you till the end, Joe. If you're listening to this, Mr. B Joe Biden. Anybody know that video of the Kurdish guy, lo lovely Kurdish guy? Super supportive of Israel, by the way. The guy goes, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Um, I don't know. It's a toss up right now. I don't see. I don't see the war ending anytime soon. That's the only thing I can say. Now that we know there's no hostage deal on the table, this shit's gonna go on fucking fucking forever. This is gonna be never ending. I honestly, I don't think the, I don't think that Israel and Palestine ever go back to normal after this. To be honest with you, because the thing is, they've held our hostages for. I remember when Gilad Shalit was held hostage. And we talked about him for years, for years, for years, for years. And it was like there was a part of Israel that was always gone. And the thing is, we know for a fact now, there's just so many people hostage that, that are disappeared. Like the 130 people, you just, you're never going to be able to replace that void. And Israelis, I know how this country operates, both the government and the people, they're going to latch onto that shit forever. It is going to be a dividing point in this country, literally for fucking ever. And now we know for a fact we're not getting them all back, ever. It's never happening, unfortunately. Yes, like Raj said, it's going to be a new normal. What that new normal looks like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it means. I cannot see this getting better for Palestinians. That's the only thing I could say. And 
and unfort and it's not gonna be better for Israelis per se, but we'll make do. We'll go on. I just see Palestinians suffering immensely moving forward. Immensely. I don't see any way where Palestinians' lives improve from October 7th in any capacity, whether it's in Gaza or the West Bank. People like me who used to be much, much more about peace and reconciliation, I've lost a part of me in this. I'll always be honest about it. I really have. I've lost a part of me in this when it comes to the, the hope and the future. I'll never, ever judge a Palestinian based on who they're from. I, but, but, but I've lost a part of me. I've lost a part of me that was more compassionate, that was more listening, that was more able to rationalize. And I think that millions of Israelis, just like me, some of which are Arab as well, yeah? Some of which are Arab as well, have lost that part of them as well. Oh, sorry, I spoke in Hebrew. Uh, it's hard, it's hard to say. St. Mark wrote, damn right. There's no going back after they did on October 7th. And one of the Hamas leaders went on Lebanese television and said that we'll do October 7th over and over and over until Israel is gone. Yeah, but that's just bullshit. They're fucking stupid. They're not really, they can't, they don't have the balls to do anything. They just hide in tunnels. If you go to these, Raj said, if you go to the Israeli government website, gov.map, okay. You see the Israeli, do you see that Israel wants to annex the West Bank while the Gaza border is shown? Yes, Israel needs to annex the West Bank already. Israel needs to take the West Bank, create it, incorporate it as part of Israel, and help Palestinians to national, like to, to nationhood, help Palestinians become citizens. We need, we need to move forward on that already. That has to happen before we end up with another Gaza in the West Bank. Even though I think there's too many Jews there for that to happen, <clears throat> there, there needs to be, West Bank needs to be sorted already. That should be a goal of ours in the, in the near future, it really should. But no, there's no claim, there's no Gaza, there's no Palestinian state, there's no right, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. Definitely not in the West Bank either. There's no way that you can have an ideology that wants to shoot rockets at civilian cities <laughs> that's right now on the coast at a mountain that can shoot it directly towards Tel Aviv. It's just not possible. You can't do it. It's not. It, there's no moral argument to be made. There will not be and there should not be a Palestinian state in the West Bank in any capacity. No Israeli really wants it. I'm not even sure that many Palestinians want, to be honest with you. What, what Palestinian wants to be living under a Palestinian governance in the West Bank? Most Palestinians that live in the West Bank don't even want to live in the West Bank. They want to live in the rest of Israel. So we need to take, I really truly believe we need to take the West Bank, incorporate it, find a way for Palestinians to live in peace, freedom, and dignity within the state of Israel or some sort of agreement that's some sort of non-negotiable demilitarization it's got to be something new something fresh but yeah there's no there's no moral um there's no moral argument to be making a palestinian state that conversation is gone i don't think i don't think anybody's down for it nobody's down for that cause anymore at least from the people who should be able to give that power corn julio polio says annex judea and samaria the arabs who are peaceful can stay with open arms if they want to kill kill they can fuck off. I couldn't agree more, to be honest with you. And I've been traveling uh, throughout the West Bank this whole week. Alex said, man, these comments are shit. Nah, dude, this is part of the community. This is what we got. We got Shayna, our moderator, turning on sirens, welcoming everybody. Shayna is an integral part of our community. She's your welcome party. She's also your police. She'll arrest the shit out of you if you, if you start anti-Semitizing all up in here. But this is it. This is an open forum of conversation, guys. This is what we do up in this hoe. We do open conversations, we converse, we talk, we throw around ideas. Sometimes we bully each other, especially if you're anti-Semite. That's how we do it up in the traveling clad. No other way to do it, folks. Being Becoming said, Israel had tried multiple times to extend civil law to the West Bank, Palestinians, and the military courts, but were blocked by the UN slash PA every time. Yeah, I really, I really think we need to disconnect all relations from the UN at this point. They've proven themselves to be a completely incompetent organization at this point. There's no, there is no moral case either for continuing our partnership with the UN in any capacity whatsoever, in any capacity. The UN is a fucking joke. How many of you guys hate the UN as much as I do? Do you hate the UN? Let's see. And I think this is universal. Listen to my plea real quick before you vote yes or no. 
If you're a Palestinian or Israeli or pro-Israel or pro-Palestine, you should hate the UN equally because the UN hasn't done shit for Palestinians, hasn't done shit for Israel. <laughs> all it does is condemn Israel unwillingly and all it does is support terrorism via UNRWA to the Palestinians. Like, it's literally never done anything. If the UN actually had a fucking backbone and supported the Palestinians the way it's supposed to support Palestinians via UNRWA, there never would have been terrorists involved in UNRWA. But the UN is a spineless, disgusting organization. It really is. And that's why things like UNRWA Watch or UN Watch need to exist. That's why a literally a fucking enclave, not even an enclave, it's like a side organization of watching the UN from being too anti-Semitic needs to exist on the behalf of Israel. Because that's how fucked up that organization is. Disgusting. It really is disgusting. Terry Bogar, 2024, said, Did someone hear that what happened at Lebanon, some secret organization kidnapped a person from Lebanese forces called Pascal Selman and he is killed? Yeah. Uh, and then the, um, I forgot, the leader of Hezbollah, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't really care. I don't care at this point. I remember all these fucking murderous regime terrorists' names. I can't, really can't keep up with it anymore. Um, he condemned the Christian community being appalled at one of the Christian Lebanese people being murdered by Hezbollah. Of course they're fucking angry. You're murdering their people. There's a declining population of Christians in Lebanon who was once the most populous Christian country in the Middle East. Of course. But the thing is the Christians of Lebanon have lost the plot already. It's over. And for those of them who still support Hezbollah, it's over. It's over. That story is shut and closed. All you're going to get is Islamic extremism down there. That's it. It's over. Corbin said, if you could ask Ismail Haniya and Benjamin Netanyahu one question each of what has happened in the last six months, what would that be? You don't have to answer now, but think about an answer in the next life. Oh, I could think about it now. If I had to ask Ismail Haniya and Benjamin Netanyahu one question each of what happened in the last six months, what would it be? I would ask Benjamin Netanyahu straight up, did you know? Obviously, he wouldn't answer truthfully because he's a politician, but I would say, did you know this was going to happen? I think people don't understand. I think people don't know how much as an Israeli, it's metaskel. How do you say metaskel? Any Hebrew speakers here? Ech letargem metaskel? Metaskel in Hebrew to English? Metaskel. Ani metuskal. How do you say? Um, metaskel, metaskel, metaskel. How do you say that in English? Why am I... Oh, I think the word metaskel is uh, frustrated. I think it's frustrated. Um, I don't think people understand how frustrating it is. The events of October 7th, like for a Jew, for an Israeli, it's kind of hard to like come to terms with it. Even you still like you. I want to have an answer and I know I'm never going to get that answer of what happened and how this was allowed to happen. But I would want to know if he knew, if he knew that this was going to happen. If truly, with all the theories that are going around, if it was avoidable. I don't have that full confidence, and honestly, no Israeli does. Whether or not, yes or no. No Israeli has the full confidence. Some might say that they do. Some might say that this was an inside job, but none of them actually have the answer. And um, I want to know. I want to know. That would be the biggest question I would have is I want to know what was this? Was this? Did you know that this was going to happen? Did you have any even inkling of an idea? Was this a fucking of was this avoidable? This situation? Could you have stopped this? I don't think people understand how much this has changed changed our lives forever. Like. People, people who are uninvolved don't understand. This, this is, it's changed the course of my life and my family's life immensely. But it's not just me. It's every Jew. It's every Israeli. Every Jew and every Israeli. It's just changed the course of our lives forever. Forever, forever. And it's a side of the world I maybe didn't want to know. I didn't want to see. But it's a thing that's opened up that I can't close. And that's, 
Yeah, I would, I would want to know. I'd want to ask Bibi that question, I would say. And um, as for... Uh, thank you for being here. Good night, guys. Thank you for those of you guys signing off. Um, for, as for asking Ismail Hani, yeah, I would just ask him if he's a fucking human being or if he's a fucking demon. That's what I would ask him. I don't want to ask him a single question. I don't want to say a single word to that person. I, w I want to say things I can't say on a YouTube live stream, but I won't say those. But uh, I wouldn't have, leg legitimately, I wouldn't have a single question I'd want to ask him. Not one. Not one question I would want to ask the member of Hamas. There's, there's actually no member of Hamas I'd want to ask any questions to. Maybe, maybe the on-ground uh, people who are still involved with Hamas till this day, maybe I'd ask them some questions, but not the leaders of Hamas. Guys, uh, join our Discord group. Some great conversation tonight, folks. Fantastic live stream. Consistent group of people. We're ranging about 150 people the entire time. It's very lovely to have you guys all here with me tonight. I really, really appreciate you all being here. Join my Discord. Please join my Discord. And we're going to have some conversations about some fun stuff really soon. I want to have you guys call in. I want you guys to talk to me. I want you guys to share with me your opinions, your thoughts, how you're feeling. What's going on with you? I want to know all about it. All about it. Folks, my folks, my loves. Join that Discord. The beam becoming wrote, when an Israeli expresses what Tal is expressing, you always get someone going, oh yeah, but what about the Palestinians? Empty what about it? Two things can be true at once. There's never been, there's never been a bigger lack of compassion. And at this point, it almost confuses you as an Israeli, like, fuck it, I don't even want your compassion anymore. I'm not victimizing myself. Just go fuck yourself. I don't want any compassion. Um, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what my experience is. I don't need your compassion. That's the point that I've gotten to with this stuff. Is like every time I tell, I just share what I've experienced with this. They're always like, they're always like, uh, well, what about the Palestinians? <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. I know about the Palestinians. I'm aware. That my, my heart hurts for them a lot too. Because truly I have people who are Palestinian who are in my life who I love very, very, very much. Who I consider family. People don't know that. It, it, they don't know that a lot of Israelis do though. Like people don't understand how much of Israel is intermixed. Think about the people in Haifa. Think about the people here in Yafo who have been living side by side with Arabs for the last 75 years. Imagine how much our communities are hurting because of what Hamas did. When there was actually like a point in time where things were less tense at least. We're all hurting. We're all, we really all are hurting. But we're not allowed to share. As Israelis, we're not allowed to share. We're not allowed to say jack shit. We're not allowed the feeling of pain. And fuck it, you know what? I like, uh, I also say, I say fuck it. I don't need your compassion. I don't want you to even feel that I'm feeling anything. I'm just telling you what I've experienced. You don't need to come, you don't need to understand it. You need to agree with it. You don't need to feel anything for it. Just fuck off, take the information and fuck off. That's it. <laughs> honorable, honorable Lorax Huxtable III said, you're tweaking so hard, tone down your dose of Adderall. If only you knew how much anxiety I get from the simple idea of doing drugs. I'm terrified of doing drugs. I've never done Adderall in my life. Isn't Adderall the thing that's supposed to help you focus on tests or something? Or is that Valium? Or is that Xanax? I don't know. I just people my age, they all take those drugs. I'm you guys know something? I have a I have a terrible fear of control of a lack of control. I used to smoke a lot of pot when I was younger, and I pretty much stopped because I'd get anxiety from a lack of control. I don't even really drink alcohol anymore. I really don't. I drank on um on Monday, I was filming in the West Bank, and we went to a few vineyards, to a few wineries. And I drank a little bit of alcohol and I felt like garbage after. Like I genuinely I haven't drank it in months and I was like, I don't think I have it in me. I think I'm about to convert to Islam, man. I don't, I don't drink alcohol anymore. I really do. Oh, Adderall is for ADHD. I don't have ADHD, but I think I definitely do have ADD. I get very, um, my attention's all over the place. But I don't know. Ayasur al Barguthi said, Israeli people need to leave Palestine and go wherever they came from. I think you need to leave. I think you need to leave, period, and go back to nowhere. <laughs> I got you, bitch. Guys, join my Discord. 
Join my goddamn Discord, folks. Join my goddamn Discord. I want to get you guys on a call. I want you guys to call me up. I want to get you guys to call me up. And I want to speak to all your beautiful faces. Can I speak to all your beautiful faces tonight? Who would like to call in? Who would love to call in? There's so many of you guys that I want to speak to. Join my Discord right about now. I'm ready to start taking some calls, folks. Who would like to call tonight? Akira Dubwise said, you a clown. Akira, you want to talk to me about it? Join my Discord. I want to talk to you about it. Join my Discord. Join my goddamn Discord. Um, let me type here in the Discord chat. I want to get somebody on call. Chef Wax produced and said you could have had a hundred dollars. What did I miss out on? Was there a, was there a special going on? TV Talk with Avi said, by the way, I can't super chat anymore for some reason. Maybe you hit your limit for the month. I don't know. That's unfortunate though. I love your super chats, Avi. They're always special. <clears throat> Anybody else having issues with super chat? Um, our regular viewers that are here that are always ready to. Uh, join the call are not here so i don't know if anybody wants to join would anybody like to join the call or should i uh should i just continue talking because i can elena sent us two british pounds thank you elena thank you so much my love my sweetheart my precious The being becoming says Palestine will never be free until it gives up trying to destroy Israel. Until then, they're only going to give rebates on lives of their own children. And not only that, though, people don't understand. With the same logic that you said, it's also true that Israel will never be free either. Ever. As long as Palestinians want to keep destroying Israel, the Muslim world will always keep on pushing them down and back into it. It's a problem. It's a two-way street and it really sucks. I wish there was a way out of it. I really do. Johnny Fryer says, Tall, I don't know if you know that Hamas has offices in Cape Town. I'm not surprised. I think I heard some room, what, some murmur of that before. But uh, if you'd like to explain to us more about it, I didn't. Well, let's Google it. I'm curious. Hamas offices in Cape Town? <clears throat> Straight up. Well, they've got press offices in both Cape Town and Johannesburg. That's terrifying. That's literally terrifying. It's also very sad that the South African government decided to sell out their Jewish co community in their country. Basically sell out their country towards the Iranian regime. That's really, really sad. But again, that's corruption. <clears throat> HD said I can no longer gift memberships. Oh, I wonder what's going on. Wait, let me try. Can I gift a membership? I wonder if they took it away from me. Like if maybe they maybe they're cracking down on me or something. I don't know. I, I can see the option of membership gifting, but it's never allowed me to do it before. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll look on the back end, but don't worry about it, guys. You guys have done so much already. So don't even don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it, folks. I love you. Anyways, we know that YouTube is not the best way to support the channel anyways. It's great for this live stream for conversation, but they take 33%. So join the Discord. Join the Discord, folks. Alex wants to call. Alex, I'm going to call you. We got a beautiful viewer, Alex. <clears throat> Let's give Alex a call. What do you guys say? What do you guys say? What do you guys say? You know what? We're going to try to call Alex from the computer today. Let's see if this works. And you guys tell me if you can hear Alex all right. Um, how do I call Alex? I 
can't figure out how to do it. Oh, Alex? Oh, there we go. Caught it. Caught it, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the beautiful, wonderful Alex. Ridiculous. How you doing, Alex? Oh, I'm good. I'm looking at all these uh, anti-Zionist bastards that are uh, making a lot of sense in here. Can I just confirm, are you the same Alex that's been super chatting quite a bit in the last month? Yeah, that's me. That's ah, definitely me. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you a lot, and I just want to say uh, thank you so much. Well, I, I wish I could make all of the live chats, but it's kind of hard in the evenings. I do a lot. I wish I could do better with the... Uh, with the what's it called with the um with the time zones maybe i will in the future we better schedule a little better for different time zones so where, where are you from tell me a little bit about yourself introduce yourself to the audience i'm curious to hear from you uh well i live in bucharest which is actually in the same time zone as israel oh cool and uh but i was born in the u.s uh -huh. and i'm a triple citizen i'm israeli romanian and american wow amazing so you your family is romanian jew yeah, exactly. One of my best friends, Sal, is a Romanian Jew. One of my closest friends in the world. I think we were the part of the biggest immigrant population in like the 70s in Israel, if I'm not mistaken. So. And what I love about the Romanians, Romanians and Hungarian Jews specifically, is you guys are kind of considered like the fake Ashkenazis. You're like the most spicy Ashkenazis there are, you know? I love that. I've never heard that. <laughs> oh, really? You guys, are, you guys are fake Ashkenazi. It's not real. It's the same way like calling Spanish people Ashkenazi is not really this Spagadim, you know? That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Well, we're part of the former uh, Byzantine and Ottoman Empire. Correct. So we're... Uh, Correct. We're definitely... Yeah, there you go. You got a little bit of it. spice in there. You got a little bit of spice in your rice. Yeah, there you go. What do you think about... Um, and if it's too political, you don't have to answer. But what do you think about what the IDF did with the uh, with the sons of, uh, of Haman? <laughs> of the modern day Haman? Look, I think it's all fair game. I think these leaders um, kind of line themselves up to be shot between the eyes. And their kids, especially the ones that are terrorists themselves, like those three young men, that's just part of the, you know, part of the deal. What can I say? It's not too political. Yeah, it's hard to feel compassion for a ter for like a terrorist son, or or at least if you know that the terrorist son or children were probably sympathizing with the terrorist, it's it's hard to feel. Yeah, exactly. It's hard. He to feel had compassion. something like I don't know eight kids or something, and these three these three sons of his were what's it called assigned, I guess, to uh, look after things in Gaza. So you know. It's, it is what it is. They were Hamas. They were coordinating for their daddy from Qatar. That's it. Yep, a hundred percent. Daddy in Qatar can get fucked. That's that's my opinion. And honestly, with this entire family going along with him. Well, I think his uh, his sister was also. She was under treatment in Israel, and she got kicked out, didn't she? I don't, I remember they raided her house recently, and they kind of like they. I don't know. I think she was arrested. I, I don't remember exactly what happened. Maybe people. Oh yeah, yeah, she got arrested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Recently, because she was living within Israeli borders, but yes, she was being treated in the hospital, and uh, and um, and yeah, but it's the same yeah, thing as Yechia Sinwar. Yechia Sinwar also was treated in the hospital. It's like they turned his back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think there's some. I don't know. Someone's kid was also being treated in an Israeli hospital. I, I think, think. I think that was Hania's sister's kid, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, fuck them all. Fuck them all. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I really couldn't agree fuck more. Uh, how's yeah, uh, how's really life been? How's life been in Bucharest since the war began? Uh, it's a mixed bag. People here are kind of. Um, Romania is definitely not as political as a lot of Western European countries, since it's kind of. Uh, backwards here, kind of more third world. A little people who come here aren't so 
ambitious, let's just say. Mm-hmm. So they uh, they just come here to live kind of a quiet life. But um, there is kind of a small progressive left that does protest. Okay. Um, and I saw some like graffiti, but nothing particularly dramatic. Do you feel like overwhelmingly okay. they're they're supportive or unsupportive or just kind of neutral? It depends. I mean, there are since it's kind of a more conservative Christian country, I'd say the kind of older generations are supportive of Israel, kind of in the biblical sense, maybe. Um, I know a lot of Christians who have done pilgrimage in Israel and Jordan. They visited all the like jesus sites right uh and they they a lot of those tour guides actually live in judea and samaria so so they get exposed to i don't know west bank uh peddler let's say and they um they kind of don't see the issue with settlement um younger people are very kind of generally anti-violence And when you get into the details, they kind of just back off and say, well, it's confusing. It's kind of a lot. I don't really know. That's kind of the vibe here. I've got a random question. I've never been to Romania. It's always kind of been on my radar, but I've never been interested enough to actually go. Is it a nice country? Do you like living there? Just out of curiosity. I mean, I like living here for the same reason that I mentioned earlier, that it's kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean... I mean, quiet in the peaceful sense. It's not a people are loud here, but uh, yeah, it's nice. It's uh, a lot of Israelis come here, as you most likely tons, know. Tons, yeah, tons come. But mostly um, they come for like partying and stuff, no? If I remember correctly. Yeah, Bucharest is kind of the the prostitution place. Oh, where um, nice. All of the the what's the what's the stereotypical like? All of the Tomevs come to have sex and uh, get drunk and gamble. Oh, is real. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a free place. It's cheaper than other places. It's, you have the sea, there's mountainside. It's nice. It's nice. Cool. But it's not, not like an actual sea, right? It's a black sea. Black Sea, right? It's the Black Sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the Black Sea. That's an actual sea. Come on. I mean, it's kind of like a glorified lake, no? I, I don't know if I'd say that. It's a, it's an okay sea. I want to make sure I mean, my geography is not fucked right now. Wait one second. I got to make sure. Because I feel like... It's the, it's the one that's... It's the Ukrainians have the Black Sea. The Russians have the Black Sea. Bulgaria. Oh, wait. That's the Caspian Istanbul. Sea. Oh, it's uh, a... The Caspian is different. It's a lake. Come on. The only reason it's a sea is because Istanbul kind of opens it up. <laughs> it's a fucking lake. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough, fair Come enough. Come on, it's a fucking lake. <laughs> I'm joking with yeah, you. No, I don't, comment, I, no comment, no comment. I didn't mean to it's, offend. It's a, it's a dirty lake. Yeah, fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Alex, my Bye. friend, thank you a million times for the support that you've been showing to the channel. It's lovely conversing with you. It's always surprising to me how much fun, especially those of you guys who have been like financially supporting the channel. Every time I brought you on to call, it's a fucking great conversation that flows so well. So thank you for being here. I would love to get you on to speak again in the future. It's lovely getting to know you, loving to meet you, love, lovely to meet you, and, and just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you a lot, man. Thank you. Take care and keep keep it up. I love it. Will it's do. awesome. All the Hasbara. It's great. Thanks, buddy. Thank I appreciate you. you. See you around, man. Bye bye. What a lovely soul, man. I fucking love you guys. I genuinely love you guys. I'm in love. You guys are the best. What kind of who gets a community like this? Tell me. I feel I feel grateful. Who gets to have a community like this? A lot of people get to have a community, but who gets a community like this? Um, who's ready? I would like to invite some more guests on the call. Thank you so much to Alex for joining us. Absolutely lovely. You guys are fucking amazing. Every time I bring you on a call, you make me happier and happier. Asa also dropped us another 1999 Great British Pounds, up to $130. In super chats right now. Hamas leaders allowed seven passengers in a five-passenger car. Irresponsible. Dark humor, but I f- I'm here for it, man. I fucking love it. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> I'm all about it. 
That's just the way that IDF uh, 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 enforces uh, driving, driving stuff. Um, Retro wrote me, can you look in direct messages? Okay, Retro, rem uh, I'll look, just message me after the live stream because I'm focusing on live stream right now. We'll talk after, I can see that you wanna talk to me about something. Delman, I'm gonna give you a call right now. Delman, 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 Delman. How do I give you a call? I, I really don't know how to use Discord very well. I have to be honest with you guys. Hey. Okay, Delman's ready to hop on the call with us. Let's call Delman. Guys, if any of you guys are anti-Israel and you want to speak to me, please, please, please um, join our Discord. I would love to converse with you. And my audience would love to hear from you, especially if you don't like Israel, if you're anti-genocide, if you're anti-Israel, you love Palestine, hop on a call with us. Hop on a call with us. Yeah, the Discord notifications are going off on my phone and I don't want to turn it off. Somebody's spamming me. But I don't know. I never understand how to use... Discord. Delman? I'm trying to call Delman right now, but I'm not, not getting any reply. Technical difficulties. Okay, wait, let me try to call Delman again. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome to the call, Mr. or Mrs., I don't know, Delman. Come on, can you hear me? A little, a little cracky there, but we can hear you. Delman? Yes, can you hear me? There we go, now we got you. Delman's a pretty Jewish last name. Are you Jew? Are you a Jew? Uh, I am a Jew, but that's not even a name. That's just a nickname. Ah, okay. But yeah, I, I am a Jew. Are you a Jew? You dirty Jew. I like you very much. <laughs> um, I am. I am a Jew from uh, France. From France. Hello. It's one of the Frenchies. How are you doing, my friend? Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us all about you. Go. Well, right now I'm watching from Barcelona. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm living here for a few months and doing an internship mm -hmm. and uh, last year i was living in israel for a semester uh, uh studying in, in jerusalem and uh and yeah pretty much nice that's super cool what kind of uh, what actually what kind of jew are you because french jews are very interesting some are ashkenazi some have like uh north african so, dna um, can you hear me? yeah yeah i can hear you I lost you. I don't know if you can hear me. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I was I was saying I'm half uh, Ashkenazi from uh, Poland and half Sephardi from uh, Morocco. Wow, you're just like my friend. Uh, you're just like my friends. My friends Rudy, like Rudy's family, uh, is exactly that. I believe. Really? Yeah, I believe he's Polish on one side, Moroccan on the other, or maybe he's Algerian. He's I don't the, remember. He's Israeli. He's Israeli French. Yeah. Uh, my close, okay. my close yeah, friends. Like yeah, that's very cool. Um, cool. So, did you grow up with a lot of like cross culture between the Ashkenazi and the Mizrahi side? Uh, so, I'm not from a very, uh, very religious family. So, we were basically doing only the big holidays. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding all the traditions, I, I had more the Ashkenazi tradition. Mm -hmm. But regarding food, uh, I was like. I, all my family preferred the Sephardi food, so we were more um, in Sephardi food. More Sephardi. So how, do you, how, how has it been for you since the war has began in Barcelona? I mean, Spain is a pretty anti-Semitic country from what I gather uh, for the most part, and especially Barcelona with the whole Catalonia thing. They kind of see a lot of themselves in uh, Palestine. I remember when I was in Barcelona, I felt a lot of that. But how, is, how has it actually been for you being there? So I wasn't in Barcelona at the beginning. At the beginning of the war, I was traveling around Europe for two months. Mm -hmm. And when it happened, I was actually in Krakow. I just had visited Auschwitz the, the, day, the day just before. Wow. Uh, and um, yeah, it was pretty hard, you know, like uh, I was there with, with an Israeli friend. Uh, it was pretty hard 
like wow. to just discover, like to wake up in the morning and to discover uh, everything that had happened. And then, like I continued traveling. It was pretty hard because I was also following the news all day long. Uh, also, I had a lot of family in Israel, so I was uh, I was worried. And, uh, and yeah, I, I think at, at the beginning, those people I was meeting were uh, pretty supportive. Also, I was not presenting myself as an Israeli. I was pre- presenting myself as a as French. Mm-hmm. But when they when they knew I was Jew and that I was um, living in Israel the day, the, the year before, um, they were pretty comprehensive. Uh, but then I like little by little started seeing the, the opinions changing. You know, when people. Uh, Forgetting about seventh of, of October and uh, more focusing on the on the, the genocide in Gaza, you know. The genocide. And so, yeah, that's what I'm hearing a lot uh, in uh, in Europe. We're all a bunch of geno Nazis, Zion Nazis. Tell me, um, you said something really interesting that I'd love for you to touch on, especially for the people who listen. A lot, I have a big point about talking about this. About, but again, not to try to victimize Israelis or people who have an Israeli background. But I want just to people for people to understand where we come from. Have you felt throughout your life like you've had to be sort of careful about this identity or this label of being Israeli? Um, so, like when I grew up, you know, I wasn't really thinking about it. I like I was I didn't grow up too much uh, thinking about Israel and uh, thinking about religion. Like I always felt Jewish, but uh, I wasn't wasn't something I was uh, thinking about all the time. And then, like when I started um, becoming older and seeing more uh, politi- politicized people, I could see that uh, usually people were more uh, pro Palestine without even knowing what they were talking about. Right. And so that's when I started also to be interested in it because I was like, okay, this country is a. Uh, Supposedly, the Jewish country. If every if every country, I mean, if everyone is criticizing it, I want to see, I want to understand why. So I started uh, reading about it, and uh, I made my own opinion. And uh, I think that Israel has done uh, wrong wrong things too. But uh, at the end of the day, like most people are, uh, I mean, not most people, but a lot of people are now saying that Israel should not even exist, and that's. That's something I'm trying to fight to fight about. Like I, I always talk about it with people. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're fighting that good fight, man. Especially when you're out there in Europe, Europeans. And I know there's some Europeans watching, and you are technically European, European Jew. But first, you are a Jew. Before you are European, you are a Jew. Um, Europeans always strike me as a little strange because they have sort of this like double-sided support for Israel slash Jewish people. Like there's obviously, especially in Western Europe, Europe, Western Europe, there's an immense amount of guilt felt by a lot of Europeans for what happened during the Holocaust um, and for the lack of support that we received then. But I feel like with Europeans have a good heart. Generally, they have a good heart. And a lot of times a very open-minded society who wants good and equality for as many people as possible without understanding the nuances of societies. And so they see what's going on in Palestinian society nowadays. They see what's going on and they want the best for Palestinians. And that for makes that puts a lot of Europeans in a really tough position when it comes to Israel-Palestine. Because they're like, oh, I want to support the Jews. But also I want to support who I see being the underdog in like this, you know, disprivileged society. And I think it's so important, especially somebody like you, man, who is both Ashkenazi and Sephardic. And you have the Polish and you have the Moroccan DNA in you. And these labels are so important nowadays to have conversations with people, whoever you encounter, um, obviously as long as it's safe, but to educate people, man, like more people like you need to step up to the plate and make sure that our stories are told. You know, I really, really, really believe in that. And I don't know how old you are, but it seems like you're a student, so you're probably younger in your 20s. Uh, the more like, the more connections, 22, so the more connections that people like you make, especially on the ground with people in Europe, um, because society in Europe is obviously changing. Uh, I think it can only benefit the world. And, you know, if you are doing some of that activism on the ground, I personally appreciate it a lot. And I think that's awesome, man. Uh, you have any message yeah, you want to... I wouldn't call it uh, activism. It's more like that I like talking about it. And so whenever the occasion comes, you know, when I'm not going to people uh, doing Hasbara, you know, that's not what I'm doing. But it's a form of Hasbara. You know, those conversations are. They are a form of Hasbara. 
it's not like you're doing it like you're getting paid for it like i'm doing it as my job right now or like you're not doing it as like a organized thing but it is a form of asbara because any asbara is asbara at the end of the day it's true mm. um but yeah man uh i appreciate you thanks for calling in very nice to speak to you yeah, thank you and uh we'll see you around brother be be well be safe there in barcelona you and be safe too bye bye thanks man see you lovely conversations guys anybody else want to call in i would love love to have you guys call in who wants to call in join the discord right now we've been managing around 150 people jack what were you saying he didn't have polish moroccan dna he doesn't have polish moroccan dna he doesn't have polish plus moroccan dna what are you saying he does have he said he had polish moroccan dna he said he was half ashkenazi half half uh sephardic and he said he had polish moroccan dna did i get that wrong did i get that wrong i thought i got that right You've confused me, Jack. Anybody want to join our Discord? And also, wait, Alex dropped us a super chat for $19.99 while I was on that call, bringing us up to $150 tonight in super chats. What a lovely Alex that is. Guys, got to run, but I'm so glad I got to call in. The community here is great. Support through this shit. And to the illiterate Zionism is a to the illiterate Zionism is, Zionism is a land is a land back movement for indigenous people. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of free Palestine people in this live chat right now. Would any of you free Palestine people like to come onto a call with me on Discord and have a conversation with me? Anybody would like to free Willie? Correct, Jack. Okay, you're right. Your nationality doesn't equal your DNA. He's got Jewish DNA. You're right. You're right. I misspoke. I misspoke. Jack, you are correct. He doesn't have Moroccan and Polish DNA. His family had an experience in those countries diaspora jews but he is ethnically a goddamn jew as a jew a very nice jew and i like him very much all these jews very naughty this naughty pesky jews i will catch them each one and i will give them a nice hug honest thoughts Honest thoughts, as a poll, honest thoughts. I won't be offended. I'll take it, I'll ingest it. I'll try my best to not do it more if it's, if it's not the answer I want. But I fucking know you guys, I hope it's the answer I like. Okay, ah. Ah. almost thought I had to stop there. I got scared. I thought you guys would say, hmm? <laughs> it's changing, it's getting close. Okay, I think you guys are with me. Borat accent stays. Borat accent stays. You clicked on the Discord link, but it doesn't take me to your server. Wait, let me let me cross verify. No, click the new Discord link. It, it, it takes you to my Discord. Join the Discord, folks. I would love to call in one more person before we end the live for tonight. $150 on Super Chats. We managed about 150 people throughout the live through the entire time. Anyone wanna phone in now? Last. Oh, here. Wait, somebody wants to phone in. Phone in. I t I need to kick my daughter into the shower, and then I would love to call. Two minutes. Okay, we got two minutes to kill. Okay, we'll wait for you. We have two minutes and then somebody new is calling in. It's exciting. We have three new callers tonight. Very exciting. Um, well, let me scroll through here and see if I can answer some questions and kill some time in the meantime. I think I might get headphones soon for these live streams uh, so I can hear the Discord sounds in my head and not, not necessarily outside. And then I have to find a way to stream the audio from the computer into this so it sounds better. It's a lot of work to be done and I don't have time to do any of it. So if anybody guys want to volunteer to help me, please, especially a Discord mod. I saw somebody in the Discord writing something about a Discord mod. If any of you guys know how to use Discord and you want to moderate my Discord, please. I need somebody to help me with Discord. We have a lot of people in there. It's like 100 people now and I don't know what I'm doing and somebody's talked to me about hacking and I'm scared. So I don't know what's going on there, but please somebody help. <laughs> If any of you guys love Discord. It's Retro. Okay, Retro is going to moderate. If anybody else wants to help Retro, I think you should have a couple moderators. Okay, Halo's here. Halo, we're giving you a call right now. She's putting, she or he, I think she is putting her daughter to sleep or to the shower. And then we're going to give her a call right now. 
Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, whoever's messaging me on Discord, chill. Chill! Guys, I am welcoming to the call Mr. or Mrs. Halo, which I am not sure who they are. Hello? Are you here? An awkward, an awkward silence, silence before we begin this conversation. A moment of peace and meditation. Namaste. Ah, speaking in Hebrew, Rega. Okay. Um, let's go back to the chat for now. ASA said, speaking of IQ, do you know that Ashkenazi Jews have the highest average group of 115 war? All right, I'm not going to read the rest of that because it's a little racist. <laughs> I'm not going to read the rest of that. Okay. Hey, hey what's your name? Hi, I'm Hila. Hila, name od Hila. Welcome to the live stream. Good to hear from you. Um, I think we we actually we tested um, I think a month ago on Instagram. Oh, cool. I I told you that I was supposed to be in this party at the Nova Festival, and for some reason I never went. I I, I didn't went. Like the first thing that. I thought, oh, it's Ains near Aza, it's too close. Mm. And on, do you remember me? My name is also Ava Walsley. We spoke on Instagram. I, I believe I do remember. I'm sorry. I'm, oh. I'm sorry if it's not 100% clear. I get a lot of messages and uh, it's kind of hard to remember everyone. Yeah, I'm getting, sorry, I'm getting a lot of messages on Discord, but I don't know how to yeah, mute it. I don't know how to mute it, just Discord, because I need to keep the call volume up. I have no idea how to do this, but somebody... Retro, stop messaging me. <laughs> it's just one person. <laughs> Don't message me. <laughs> stop. Well, I think that I, I suggested a friend of mine that I met on um, I'm talking about, I, I, I don't remember how old are you, 27? 27, think, yeah, I'm 27 years old. So, <clears throat> I was born in, in 85, so in 95, when the, well, the first intifada uh, was, um, the thing is, we know, for example, don't go on a bus that have too many people. Right. right, because most likely a terrorist will choose that one. And when you go into a shopping mall and you see uh, a lot of people um, in the line, you won't even have to say something to your friend. You will just stall time and just chatting, waiting for the line to clear, because you know that if there will be a terrorist attack, they will go where there are a lot of, like a bunch of people, for example. Right. Or, for example, I don't even remember the, um, um, the name of the junction in Haifa, but if I tell you, well, Maxim, where there was a terrorist attack, everyone will know what I'm talking about. Or Mike's place. Oh, where well, there was a terror attack. Or the scenario. Oh, where well, there was. Like, we recognize places, but uh, because we remember what happened and where. This is how, um, for example, Sbarro. Sbarro in Jerusalem. Oh, okay. Now we know where, where, where you mean. Where are you at? Okay, we go there. Uh, this is how we. Oh, come on, you know where. When there was. This and that, and there was this and that. I don't think there are lots of 
people in the world that even have this thread of thought. Like first thing when I'm going to a shopping mall, I'm looking for the bomb shelter. When I moved to the US, I remember that um, I asked the guy that showed me the facilities, oh, well, where is the bomb shelter? He looked at me. And I didn't understand why he looked at, why he's even looking at me weird. And then it hit me, oh, you don't need it here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when you go into the car to, um, and under um, a parking lot that is under a building, and in the US or anywhere other than Israel, there is no one checking the car. And I'm terrified and why someone would try to put a bomb car in it's the most easiest thing. So I won't park my car if like I have put all those little things that are so normal to us and you realize that only when you go up or well, Oh, only when you're traveling or only when you you live to other places and people look at you funny and like, you're funny. <laughs> Why wouldn't you have a security guard in a shopping mall? You're funny. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Growing up in America, I grew up in America and I didn't grow up with the fears that obviously like my parents grew up with. In Israel constantly especially with things like bomb shelters but I remember going to Jewish school when I was very young because I didn't go to Jewish school my entire life but going to Jewish school as a young kid and Jewish supermarkets and things like that around South Florida there was always a heightened sense of security because there was always a threat this is something I always try to explain to people again not in a way of trying to feel sympathy for us because I always say at this point I'm like fuck your sympathy I don't care about it but it's more in the sense of just trying to understand why Israelis carry ourselves the way that we do why we think and feel the way that we do because literally for most israelis or even if they're just half is not half israeli but like the son of israeli children like me death and like a potential getting murdered is always knocking at the door it's always right behind you the idea of getting killed or shot or blown up it's always there always even if you like i grew up in america i shouldn't have those thoughts technically you know, but that fear of, but, and it's not like a random fear of a mass shooting. It's a fear of a targeted, targeted attack on Jewish people, on you specifically, because you're a Jew yeah. or an Israeli. And it's something that people but don't understand. Out. Once they found out, it, I never, I never, you said something, you, you had a video about uh, Arab Jews. Right. And we are not Arab Jews. And I think this is when I respond to you, because I never thought about it like that. And it's once they found out you're Jewish, it's like, oh, and I remember, well, first of all, Spain is my favorite country to visit in the world. I love Madrid. I think the people in, in the base are very, very similar to us, Israel. Um, they will go above and beyond to help you, even if they don't, uh, if they don't speak English, and they will try to, to guide you the best to the best of their abilities. And the food is amazing. I love the food. I love the culture. I love the football. I love Fernando also, <laughs> but that's the topic. <laughs> and. One of, my, one of my best friends is from Madrid, so he'd be very happy to hear this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But um, I think one of my visits to Barcelona, was, um, we were in a bar, and I, even though I am a Real fan, obviously when they won the champion, um, I went out because I want to experience how it feels and to celebrate something with, with football, how it feels like to be in a festival of 
football fan, people who love the game. Um, we were talking to a guy, and once we said that we're Jewish, he told my ex-husband, oh, that's why you have a big nose. And we were both like, it's, I think it's the first time we, it was so specific that even, and, and we were all drunk. He, he hadn't even meant it. And then it's like, oh no, I probably have something with Jewish. My, my name is Simon, it's Shimon. And he, know, he knew how to say Shimon. He knew Shimon. But it just came out. Um, and also when I tried to apply to a university, it wasn't a, a university, but a college. Um, we live in the Bay Area, and of course there was like a setting for uh, for Palestine, and I asked about it, and I was very, very left, very left. Uh, I grew up on Rabin ideology, and the first time I saw my dad cry was when uh, Rabin was murdered, and like re reacted a uh, piece when I grew up. Like we really, when I was saying some uh, something as a group about Palestinians, my mother told me, "Don't speak like that because this is how they treated Grandpa, and this is how they treated uh, Grandma." And this is why, at the end of the day, they all, all of the rest of the family fight that. So don't speak up, don't speak like that about the group. If you don't know them, if you don't know the people. Uh, yeah. Then came October seven, and by the way, the settlements. I don't know if many of you know. Apparently, one of the, the peace agreement with Jordan means that as long as they are getting water, Israel are allowed to use those lands. And I was so left wing then when I took those, um, um, how do you call it, the deeds for the land, um, because um, we need to build a road, I think, uh, in Kawara, and everything said in the agreement, uh, with agreement, uh, agreement with Jordan, agreement with Jordan, agreement with Jordan, agreement with Jordan, like every single, everything. And I just dismissed it. This is how left we, I was. I, I, I dismissed, like, because it didn't fit, fit my ideology. And I don't think people know that here in Israel, we, most of us have no idea that it's Islam that have a problem with Jews and not just the Palestinian with the Israel. Well, look, in, in Islam, there are clear issues with Jewish people. And no matter what, any Muslim will tell you, no, 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 it's not true. It is. I, I bought a copy of the Quran. I read some of it. It's extremely hostile towards Jews. Now, in, in our Bible, in the Torah, there's some stuff that's very hostile towards other people as well. It depends on how you interpret your book, and it depends on what you practice. That's the truth. It's a person-to-person -person thing. And it's clear. Yeah, it's, the it's, difference in the Quran, they actually tell you. No, not you. They imagine. Just imagine the sentence behind of every tree. Yes. Um, <laughs> just imagine that sentence. Okay, behind of every tree, there will be a Jew, and the tree will tell me, "Oh, a Muslim, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill me." Now, I guess that the majority of Muslim imagine um, in their in their mind. Um, the landscape of the Middle East, right? And then they see the Nova Festival. 
and it's the landscape of the Middle East. It's literally the prophecy. And Jews, yeah. why do you think they were celebrating so much? I gotta be honest with you though, Hila, right? Your name is Hila? Or Hada? Yeah. Hila. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think that many Muslims looked into it that deeply though. Like, I'm sure there's a lot that do have the connection, but I think a lot of Muslims... Those who celebrate it, probably did. I think the ones who celebrate it, it mostly has to do with the fact that they literally don't see us as native to this place. They see us as actual colonizers of Palestine. And they also probably see Jewish people as second-class citizens or second-class people. Because the Quran says that the Jews came from the eight and the pig. And it's true. There is, there is an issue rife throughout the Muslim world. I'll, I'll, I'll never be one to uh, shy away from it. There is. But I also truly believe because, you know, I have many really good friends that are Muslim. I've met so many wonderful Muslim people around the world. It's down to interpretation. That's the thing is that you have, you have a Jewish people, obviously not on the scale that you have with Muslim people. You have Christian people, you have Buddhist people. I've traveled all over the world. I've met incredible people of faiths from all over the world. I've also met some disgusting people of faiths from all over the world. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with interpretation and the Muslim world needs to go through some sort of reform. We need to adapt the Muslim world as a global community into the modern world. The problem is it's not happening. And this, um, this persecution of ethnic minorities and different religions in the name of Islam is horrible. And it's something that not just Jews are suffering from in Israel, it's something that the Yazidis are suffering from, and the Assyrians, and the Copts, and the I Kurdish. No idea. All of that before October 7th. You didn't know, I, it. you had no idea? Nothing. nothing. <clears throat> I thought that, I honestly thought that they have problem with Israelis. That's it. I believe them when they told me that the Quran is a, a, a book of love or a, a, a religion of peace. I believed every single word. And I think that I believed that because the truth is that here in Israel, we do coexist, um, and I think that the reason we we can coexist is because when you live next to Jewish people and you go to school with them and you work with them and they are your neighbors and just the language on the street or the little things you. You see, oh, well, yeah, maybe that part is not quite true. And you do have, I mean, look what happened on October 7th. Everyone expected the Arab population in Israel to explode on us, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen for a reason. I think it didn't happen for a reason because I, I, I do think that, well, you say when there is a will, there is a way. I don't think, I thought there is a will in the Palestinian, Palestinian territories and in Gaza and everywhere else. And I genuinely, genuinely believe, I feel like the, the, the how do you say? Uh, the carpet, the carpet was pulled under my feet. Something like that. The rug, the yeah, rug, the rug was pulled under my feet. I believed it. It felt like I believed in a lot that never existed. You got a good heart. You got a good heart. You were raised with good values. I'll, I'll forever believe in that. The stuff that your parents raised you telling you is stuff that my parents didn't raise me telling me because my parents are extremely traumatized from everything they experienced growing up. And it came out in a very ugly way. My, parent, my parents are not bad people. It's just, you know, they dealt with some horrific situations and so did my grandparents. But the things that your parents taught you that you were just telling us about growing up is, uh, is lovely. And it's definitely the way that I want to I, like raise my kids. And... Um, you, I can tell that the fact that you made it to this point in your life without knowing all this stuff, it means that you weren't even looking for it, which means it must really hurt when you learned all of it. And um, 
You know, it's we're we're all hurting. We're all hurting. Is this I a, have a Christian friend. We are friends for I think fifteen years, and he's been through a lot of things. I hate them. I hate Muslims. I hate them. And she had a reason. She didn't really specify why. And I kept telling her, "How are you talking? No, I mean, no, no, that it's not like that. No, you are overreacting. No." And now I know, and I found myself like apologizing. Sorry, I haven't believed you all those years. And and when she said I hate them, it's because things that went in her family. And she she was she is Christian, so you can imagine what happened to but, but I, and I know you know this, but I'm preaching this to the choir. Maybe I'm preaching it to the choir, but I want it to be said. It really is important to make a distinction. It's not all Muslims, and there are a lot of very, 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 very wonderful Muslims, and a lot that are vocally standing up for Israel now. And it's really important to me to highlight them. Hopefully, very soon, I'm going to be making they are some cultural Muslims. Just like cultural, Jews. they're not, not. They're yeah. They're not. They're not following. They're not following I'm Islam. Celebrating the holidays, and just as like just because my grandparents, my entire family wiped out in the Holocaust, that is even what, just in honor of them to keep the tradition. So right. I I know that there are Muslims like that because we live with. We do live and we do coexist. I think this is why the shock for leftists like me was so, so, and they slaughtered the leftovers of the left in Israel. And if October 7th morning never happened, most likely those people on the kibbutz were in Kaplan demonstrating against Bibi. Oh, yeah, it feels like the world was shut up. I'm hoping for better... I don't think, think people understand why the shock is so big for us. It, it's because we walk with Muslims, we live with Muslims. We have friends that... We have co-anchors on the news that were horrified and shocked and singers and artists and... Even they were shocked, so I don't think that even they know exactly what is written in their own book. And I don't think they, maybe they don't, okay, it's, it's been, you know, it's the old days. I do think that they do treat it, as, okay, it's the old days. We do want to live and we do want to flourish and we do want to succeed and be doctors and feel success on our own merit which is very important to people because if you don't feel success by your own merit it doesn't matter how how much they will give you you will still feel like you are a victim this is what i think a it lot of it is I'm uh, I'm I'm truly hoping for uh, better times, Zila. I appreciate you calling in. Thanks for sharing with us. It was lovely, lovely to hear from you and your perspective. It brought us very deep there towards the end of this live stream. So thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon, huh? Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Toda. Night, night. Bye, bye. Night, tov. Um, wow, very deep there at the end. Uh, made some great points. It's interesting listening. I didn't. I didn't ask her, actually. I should have asked her if she was uh, considers herself still a lefty. But I feel like, yeah, there's been a huge awakening for people since October 7th about uh, life. Like I said, life has changed immensely. Uh, maybe a lot of you guys who watch who are not Jewish or not Israeli don't understand it. Those of you guys who are do. But I think there will always be a percentage of you who will never truly understand what it is to feel to be this right now. And... Um, Life has changed immensely, immensely since October 7th. It's like the course has been shifted completely. I don't know if it'll go back ever. I'm not sure. We'll see. We, we, we will see. Uh, guys, almost two hours, two hours in. 
I want to say thank you, $151. Somebody also super chatted while I was uh, talking. YB, uh, $2.99 Australian. Said Prophet, Prophet Muhammad documented October 7th centuries ago. Okay, a little, a little controversial. You see how I'm always trying to be a little bit more nice? Because I really am. I don't have a hatred for Islam by, by any means or for Palestinians or for Arabs. I don't. I just I want, I want to call out on the bullshit, which is interesting to me. Oh, YB just sent us another 799. Not all Muslims, but there are many Islamists who live by their beloved prophet who tells them to do what they did on October 7th. They won't change ever. I, I agree with that. Yes, I do agree with that. There are too many radical Muslims who live in this world who who think the, the worst of us Jews. And unfortunately, I'm not sure how we change that ever. I'm really not sure how we can make a change to that. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know how we get to those people. But um, guys, it's the end of the week. It's Thursday, tomorrow, Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. I love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me on another amazing week this week. $157 on today's live stream. I think we made 30 the other week or the other day. Uh, we got one more live stream on Sunday for this week. Um, some incredible videos coming up. I'm working on the Red Heifer video right now. It's actually kind of done and ready to go. So uh, you guys are going to lose your minds when you see it. It's fucking crazy. It is a great video with Corey Gill Schuster from the Ask Project. It, you guys are going to lose your goddamn minds. It is so good. One of the best videos I think I've ever made. So keep an eye out or get ready for it. Um, and just thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Pray, pray for Israel. I don't know what's going to happen this weekend. It looks like shit's about to get locked and loaded. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest. As every week that goes by, I'm hoping for the best. And, um, and that's it, guys. That's it. I... Uh, I really appreciate you all. It's amazing to be holding 122 of you guys till this point. Till this point, have 122 of you guys with me. It's really amazing. Um, I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next.